Well, I completely forgot to make this video. Oops. So yeah, ever since the second volume of the Dragon Ball Super Manga came out, I'd had plenty of people ask me like, so when's the review come in? When's the review? Can't wait for you to review it. Really looking forward to that review. And I'm like, it's gonna happen. And I forgot. Uh, in fact, I, I completely forgot that I didn't make this review until someone like reminded me. And I was just like, oh shit. And I had a couple other people remind me. I'm like, eh, it's coming. Ah, ah. So yeah, uh, finally got around to reviewing. Because I actually had to go and reread this volume. Because I was like, shit. Uh, I don't remember how the hell I felt about this volume. So I had to go goddamn reread it. Now, uh, I definitely feel this is an improvement over the first volume. For those that don't remember my opinion of it, uh, it's nah, it's a glorified art book, to be honest. Because the first arc of this, the, the, Go the Battle of Gods arc, really wasn't an arc. It was really more of like, it just felt like this hyper-condensed, sloppily told story that was barely a story. It, it's an advertisement. That's the problem with the manga version of Super is that it is an advertisement first than it really is anything else. It doesn't really get to become its own story until it started picking up in popularity, and V-Jump allotted him more pages and more time to really flesh it out as its own individual product. And you can see those improvements in the second half of the vo uh, of this volume, because uh, once you get to the Universe 6 arc, you know, they completely fucking skip Golden Frieza, but once you get to the Universe 6 arc, things start, uh, you know, smoothing out pacing-wise, and it really starts feeling like an actual proper uh, standalone manga product. So then that brings us to volume two. And okay, so one of the things that I always hear is that Toyotaro's manga is better than the anime. The manga is better. The manga is better. The manga is better. It's, a, it's the thing I keep hearing. And for record, for the record, for those that don't know, for those who are not aware, that uh, I do not read the manga as it's coming out. Although I know a lot of people do, uh, I don't like to read manga on the internet. I like it in paper form, bound like this, you know, like a physical release that I can just hold and do this with, you know. That's how I like to read my goddamn manga. And so yeah, I've just been waiting. I have you know, skimmed through, you know, chapters occasionally to see what's going on, especially when people are talking about, oh fuck, this, Toyotaro did this. And I'm like, uh, alright, that was cool. You know, but this is like my first time properly uh, going through it uh, as a story. And as of right now, I can't necessarily agree with the Toyotaro manga is better than the anime argument. Because uh, it makes improvements, but I also feel like it also uh, makes things worse in ways. Uh, example, right out of the gate, uh, Frost vs. Goku. It is a much better fight than what was in uh, the the anime. I thought in the anime, it was animated like shit, it was choreographed like shit, it was paced like shit. It was a shitty goddamn fight. And here the manga gives you a really fantastic goddamn fight. Uh, Toyotaro's art, goddamn gorgeous. Uh, I said this last time, I think Toyotaro might be my favorite artist to ever work on Dragon Ball. Um, you know, not so much sure about his writing, but his art is goddamn 10 out of 10. Like, I I love his aesthetic. But yeah, like, like I said, though, that fight, improvement. Uh, what I don't think is an improvement is they removed the thing where Frost was secretly a villain the whole time. And he had been manipulating and pulling strings. And he was the one behind all the space pirates that were attacking different worlds. And he'd go and save the world. And he'd be showered as a fucking hero. Like, that was a really cool layer to his character. A lot of people think, like, oh, well, now he's now he's boring because now he's just like Frieza. But just like the Universe 6 equivalent. And that's fucking bullshit. Frieza, in my mind, is more of a run-of-the-mill tyrant. He's a very charismatic run-of-the-mill tyrant, but still a by the books, just like I am the evil space emperor. He is the Darth Sidious of Dragon Ball. Uh, Frost is a bit more manipulative. In fact, really, he's more like I guess he's more like Sidious while he was still Chancellor Palpatine. You know, like like pulling pulling the strings, playing both sides, and you know, being you know sh like you know. Praised as a hero while being this evil motherfucker who was, you know, really just out for himself. And I thought that made him a far more interesting character. It had more shit going on to him. And it also made the Vegeta fight make a bit more sense. Because, like, oh, like, he's secretly a villain. So, you know, like, whenever, whenever Vegeta just one-shots his ass out of the ring, it's pretty satisfying. 
And here, Vegeta, like, just brutally beats the shit out of him. Like, like he beats him down, like, pretty bad before knocking him out of the uh, the arena. And it's, it's a thing that I feel like uh, he... Frost doesn't really deserve that kind of horrible, brutal beating. Yes, he fucking cheated. Like, you know, but he's still technically a good person in this universe. You know, he, he's he's a nice guy. Uh, it's just, you know, he was willing to cheat to, you know, to, to win. And maybe Toyotaro will retcon that in the uh, uh, universe, uh, or whatever, uh, the universe survival arc manga version maybe he'll retcon that and have that fucking just have oh he was always evil but in the context of this story right now uh yeah like, like vegeta just fucking lays a beating on him way worse than he did in the in the anime and he's not really a shitty character so he doesn't really deserve that kind of brutal fucking beating that he gets you know it's just you know, like he basically gets his beating because he looks like frieza it's Vegeta, and he looks like Frieza. Kind of racist, guys. Just saying. Uh, also, while I'm on the topic of Frost, before I jump any further, um, and things that I didn't really like is uh, the Piccolo fight. Here, Piccolo's kind of going more toe-to-toe with um, with Frost. And like it, it's established that Frost is, you know, oh, like, like he's leagues fucking better than Piccolo. Like, Piccolo doesn't stand a snowball chance in hell. Like, if he was even able to hold his own at all against Super Saiyan Goku, you know, and Goku is already leagues beyond Piccolo, uh, Piccolo didn't stand a fucking chance. And here, Piccolo is kind of holding his own. Whereas in the anime, like, he's holding his own, but it's not like in a straight one-on-one proper fight. He's being tactical. He's using all of his bag of tricks. And, you know, he's trying to keep his distance. And, like, like he's being really clever uh, in how he's approaching Frost. This, you know, he, he's, he's using tactics to deal with a far more powerful opponent. And that was really goddamn cool. It was... It added an extra layer to that fight. And here I felt that the fight for Piccolo was just a standard by the numbers Dragon Ball Z fight. There was nothing special about it, nothing that really separated. And honestly, the same thing goes for the Magetta fight. Because with the Magetta fight, you once again have, um, like, you know, Vegeta, you know, like, because, you know, him being confined, uh, added an extra layer. It made uh, Magetta a bit more, uh, a bit more imposing, uh, a bit more of a threat. And then also it has the same problem that the anime version had because Vegeta is still holding back. So there is that artificial sense of tension where it's just like, oh no, uh, like Vegeta's can't really beat Magetta. It's like he's not using the blue form. Use the blue form. If you just used the blue form, you'd probably have him beat by now. Like you can't feel like there's actually a sense of tension when the characters are intentionally holding back. And like it was a criticism I had in the anime version, and it's still a criticism now. And you can sit there and go, well, if he transformed and he just one-shotted everybody, it'd be boring. Well, yeah, it'd be boring, but it's also, it would make sense contextually. Here, you just have this false, I, honestly, I think this is fucking boring. Like, it's boring to see a character just hold back and be like, oh no, I'm losing. It's just like, transform. You have more transformations. Just fucking transform. So, yeah. It's... I didn't care for it then. I still don't care for it now. I don't think it's really an improvement at all. You know, the Magetta fight is fine. Uh, I don't think it's quite as interesting as the fight that was in the anime. Uh, and it still has the same problem of, uh, you know, Vegeta holding back. The Kava fight. The Kava fight is basically the exact same in this as it was uh, in the anime. It's just a shorter version. I thought it was fine there. I think it's fine here. Um, I I think they're both equally functional versions. I, I mean, they're damn near fucking identical. Then there's Vegeta versus Hit. And it was a cool fight. Um, I don't think it's quite as visually interesting as what was done in the anime. Because the anime was doing a thing where he was like... And like like punching him, and you said the, like the light particle and shit like uh, sprang out of the back of Vegeta and shit, and it looked fucking cool. And uh, they weren't really able to convey that kind of movement 
uh, in manga form, unfortunately, because, you know, it's a bunch of still images. So it really just looked like, you know, Hit was just beating the shit out of him. And uh, it, it didn't convey, like, the same type of, like, oh, fuck, like, like he's really, like, doing some wild shit. Like, you know, he, he's too fast to keep up with. And he's really wrecking Vegeta shit. You know, because he really felt like something special when he was fucking up Vegeta in the anime. Here, it's still a very one-sided fight. And, you know, the, the characters commenting on it conveys, like, what's going on. But I feel like the visuals don't quite convey it uh, as well as the anime did. Still a really good uh, uh, iteration of that fight. But just, you know, not, you know, as visually interesting. You know, like I said, you, you couldn't do the Tokidobashi uh, correctly uh, in manga format. And speaking of the Tokidobashi, when it's Goku versus Hit. Goku versus Hit is a fight that I had a lot of issues with in the anime version. Because um, mostly... Uh, how they were explaining how Goku was getting around it and um, didn't really make sense. It's like, like, oh, he's he's moving around it. And it's like, well, wait, how? And then, you know, you see, uh, like, hits hit using, like, the Tokitobashi and Goku is just basically moving through stopped time. And, like, I, I, I was never able to understand, like, what the fuck's going on. You know, it, like, everyone was saying, like, oh, he's he's used, like, with the Kaioken, he's moving so fast that uh, he's able to keep up with the Tokitobashi. And it's like, how? And even if that is the case, like, you know, how, like, what they're showing, like, now if they just said, like, oh, man, Goku is moving so fast that he is transcending time, that would have been one thing. Because that's what the visuals are basically showing you, is that he was, like, transcending, like, like he was moving through stop time. And... If they had just said that, it would have been cool. But that's not what they're saying. Like, they, they, they made it overly goddamn complicated in the anime, and it didn't make any fucking sense. Here, they actually make it make a hell of a lot more sense. And that Goku is, first off, at the beginning, you know, he's he's second-guessing and predicting Hit. Like, he's just like, okay, like, you know, like, he punched, he goes to attack him, and he thinks Hit's gonna, like, okay, Hit's probably gonna come from here. And he just, and whenever Hit would just, teleport in, as soon as he would teleport in, he'd just get a, get a fistful of Goku. And that was, uh, really cool. Like, I, I, I liked that a lot. Um, you know, cause it, it, like, I was actually able to understand what they were going for this time around, where in the anime, I watched the episode three fucking times, I still didn't fucking understand it. And then, whenever they, uh, do the, uh, uh, the, uh, Super Saiyan God thing, and he's like, oh shit, like, yo, the Tokitobashi, like, yo, it's not working anymore, like, why can't he stop, uh, hit? And you find out, like, oh, like, the Tokitobashi only works on character, on guys who are, uh, like, equal power to hit, or less powerful than he is. Vegeta had, like, burned himself out by going through all those fights, so Vegeta gets his shit wrecked. Makes complete sense. I like, you know, like, that's one of the things, like, like, it made so much more sense in the manga. Like, this fight is so much better here than, uh, what was in the anime. Because in the anime, it just felt like I, I, I couldn't really grasp at all what they were going for. Mostly because it didn't make goddamn sense. And what the visuals were, de were depicting were not what the characters were saying. So yeah, here we have Goku using, uh, Super Saiyan God, and then he uses Super Saiyan Blue, and... Honestly, like, it's a cool thing. I honestly prefer the Kaioken a bit more. Like, how he's able to keep raising his power. Because that would have made so much sense. Like, like he goes to, like, the blue form. And then, like, uh, hits, you know. Because one of the things I, I, I missed in from the anime version of this is that uh, Hit couldn't get physically stronger. Like, Hit couldn't power himself up like other characters do. Uh, so, as he was fighting and as he was pushing his limits, he was extending the length of the Tokitobashi. And that would have been a really cool idea in that um, having Goku, uh, you know, reach higher levels of power, you know, like he goes like the red form, then he goes the blue form, and it hits making the Tokitobashi last longer, but Goku's also closing that gap by getting stronger. So, so like, like so like the further like hit goes and like stretches the Tokitobashi, Goku is closing that gap by increasing his power. And he uses the Kaioken. And he closes that gap even more. And then he extends the Tokidobashi more. And that would have been really cool. Uh, unfortunately, they don't really uh, 
go that route. Instead, they just have hit power up, and he's just like, Oh, I'm stronger now, and now my Tokitobashi will kind of work against you. And Goku's like, Fuck you, I have blue form. And he's like, Oh, fuck. And uh, then it ends the same way that it does in the, the anime, which is Goku just ring outs himself. And here, uh, I actually kind of liked it a little bit more where Goku was just like, Oh, like you had to hold back against me. You're not, you're, like, you, you can't use all of your techniques because you're an assassin. And he just jumps out of the ring. Like, where in the, um, in the anime, I kind of didn't like the fact that he was just like, oh, well, I was going to lose anyhow, I'm completely burned out. And, you know, it just kind of felt like he was ring-outing himself, so, like, Hit couldn't ring out him. And it was just kind of a weird thing. Um, because I'm like, that's not really Goku. Goku should really be pushing his limits. And here... You know, he's just like, ah, fuck it, I give up. And it's like, really? Like, you, you've never given up like this. I mean, like, he gave up in the Cell games, but that's because, you know, he had Gohan, and Gohan was his trump card. Here, he's just like, ah, fuck it, whatever. Like, Monaka can, can deal with you. It'll be all right. You know, and then, of course, it ends with the same anti-climax as the Monaka thing, and then it super hyper-condenses uh, the epilogue, which I don't like that either. That's where it starts feeling like an advertisement again. It doesn't feel like its own proper standalone product. It's just like, oh, right, I'm, I'm reading an advertisement for a Dragon Ball anime and not an actual Dragon Ball manga itself. I mean, Toriyama would, like, hyper-condense it, like... It, it honestly reminded me of uh, the ending of the... Like the Frieza arc, where after Frieza was beaten, it's like 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 three pages just to wrap up everything. Like the epilogue is just, and it, like like everything is just in text boxes. It was terrible, terrible fucking writing there. And here it's that same type of lazy. Let's just get this shit over and done with writing style that I just did not care for. Then we get on to the Future Trunks arc, and uh, it's pretty damn good overall. Uh, I still have like a few issues, like. It, it lacks the atmosphere that the uh, that those early episodes of the Future Trunks arc had, but I feel like that atmosphere comes with the fact that it's animated, and it's in color, and you, you you can't really convey probably that same level of I mean you could convey that same level of grittiness uh, in manga format, but um, you know you you'd have to really like change up the art style, and I don't think like like a grittier, um, more bleak aesthetic. Would would uh would really complement the Toriyama esque uh character designs, so I understand it. Not a big deal. Uh, Bulma gets killed off off panel. Didn't really care for that. Where Trunks is just like, oh no, she went to clean a satellite dish and she got caught. You know, and they're keeping it kind of mysterious. Yeah, one of the things that I definitely uh liked more here was. Uh, when Trunks fights Black, he actually goes super sign. Cause like the first time he's like in his base form, and I'm like. Why are you in your base form? Like, why aren't you transforming? This guy's so fucking strong. And I've heard people fucking make the excuses of, oh, well, it's completely pointless if he transforms because he's still not going to be strong enough. It's like, yeah, but, like, he'd still be, like, you know, faster and stronger than he is, and it would increase his chances of fucking survival. Even if he's just trying to run away. Like, Jesus Christ. Like, like people will make up the most bullshit fucking reasons to defend some of the storytelling in this goddamn series. But that's beside the point. You know, here he goes Super Saiyan. Don't know why he doesn't go Super Saiyan 2. You know, considering he has that. We know he has it, but for some reason they want to save it for when he's sparring against Goku. For reasons. And honestly, okay, I had a problem with Trunks being anywhere near as strong as Goku was. Like, I didn't like the fact that... Uh, Trunks' Super Saiyan 2 was basically on par with Goku's Super Saiyan 2. Like, I'm like, oh, okay, why? Because, like, I feel like it undermines, uh, everything that, uh, that, that Goku has been going through. You know, Goku, uh, you know, he was already way stronger than Trunks the last time they met. And then Goku has been training in Otherworld for seven years straight. He comes back. You know, he obtains, you know, he does the god ritual. He absorbs the god key into himself, which fucking raises his base power to ridiculous levels. Then he goes and he trains with, um, with Whis and Vegeta. And so he does that. And then he goes and he trains in the room of Spirit and Time for an additional three years on top of that. And then to think that Trunks was just on par with Goku 
And people will fucking argue like, well, he's you know he's been fighting this entire time, so that's why he's so much stronger. It's like Trunks, is, you know, Trunks is, first off was only fighting Black for like a year. First off, secondly, uh, Trunks. Uh, you know, like, and, and, like, they, they do establish, like, oh, well, you know, like, he was trained by Kaioshin, and that's something that I do appreciate in the manga, like, the manga does do the thing where it's just like, oh, like, you know, he trained with Kaioshin, and, you know, fighting, uh, against Deborah, and, you know, he, he was training with the Z-Sword and all that stuff, and that's cool, um, I, you know, that, that, that they did that, but still, like, him being on Dabra's level isn't, like, that shouldn't make him... Okay, that's just a huge gap, is the, the thing I'm trying to get across. Like, he should not be anywhere near on Goku's level. He should not be even within fucking spinning distance of Goku. And the mere fact that, like, his Super Saiyan 2 form is on par with Goku's Super Saiyan... No, actually, surpasses Goku's Super Saiyan 3. Like, he's just like, oh, And it's like, what the fuck? Why? How does that work? I don't understand. So, yeah, like, that's actually even more annoying in the manga. That just, like... And people try to tell me, because I remember people telling me, like, oh, like, they fixed it, like, you know, now uh, Trunks is Super Saiyan 2. It's like, no, that makes it worse! It makes it worse! Like, I mean, it's gonna make a little bit more sense whenever uh, they're all fighting, and, uh, and, like, you know, Trunks is keeping up with Goku and Vegeta, and, you know, and, like, holding his own against Black and Zamas. Like, that's gonna make a little bit more sense power scaling-wise, but at the same time, though, it just it doesn't make sense that, like, he even got this... Because I hate the idea of taking these characters and, like, well, we need to make them competitive because if they're not competitive, the story isn't gonna fucking work. They basically just fucking, like, you know, put these characters on level with Goku and Vegeta just so they can be competitive, and I hate it. Like, I hate when Super does that because it undermines everything that Goku and Vegeta have been doing. It, uh, it completely undermines the idea of them being a warrior race. It completely undermines the idea... Of, uh, like, you know, all the hard work they've been doing, the fact that they've constantly been training, uh, the fact that they have all these transformations that just, you know, make them even more ridiculously powerful than they were before. So, yeah, that shit bugs the fuck out of me. Uh, then there's, uh, also they, they bring up the Beers and Kaioshin Link. I didn't like that in the, uh, in the original. Because I, I like the idea of him being linked to the Kaioshin. But I feel like he should be linked to the Dai Kaioshin, but they can't say that. And, it, like, saying that he's linked to Kaioshin brings up too many questions. And, yes, you can headcanon it away as, oh, well, well, he's linked to, like, the Dai Kaioshin and all four Kaioshin. So, once all five of them are dead, then Beers dies. That, that would be fine, but that's not what they say. They just say, like, oh, he's linked to Kaioshin. Oh, well... Okay, I guess that's how that works. So yeah, it it's one of those things where when Super tries to expand its lore, it ends up uh, creating more questions than than providing answers. And yeah, I just... And I have a weird feeling, because like I said, I haven't actually read this, so I don't know if they're going to uh, touch on it anymore. Maybe they'll cover that up later on in the manga, but as of right now... They're not, and I didn't like it. I didn't like it in the anime version. I so far I'm not liking it in the manga version. Maybe that'll change. I, I'm not like going to bet on them changing that or fixing that or making me feel better about it. Uh, and then oh, there's a bonus page at the end of the volume where we get to see the Pilaf gang in the future timeline, uh, wishing themselves uh, into kids, and. Uh, that's pretty cool because, like, you know, at very least, the manga establishes uh, the peel off gang, like how they became kids, something that the anime never fucking did, and I'm still goddamn salty about. Uh, I will say, though, that uh, the manga does not establish the peel off gang, like, why they're hanging around, uh, like, at Capsule Corp, why they were at the uh, Universe, uh, Universe 6 tournament. So yeah, like it may have explained them, but now they're just kind of there, and I yeah, mm. 
The peel-off gang are so fucking poorly in- implemented in the super, and it really agitates me because I really like the peel-off gang. Like, I don't even mind the fact that they're kids. I just want them to be integrated more properly into the fucking story so that way I can, you know, enjoy it and not be just kind of annoyed like, oh, well, this isn't being explained, and this kind of feels like it's just, whatever, they're here now. Uh, you know, and Jocko's here. I will say, um, Jocko is in the manga also, like he is in the anime. And because, uh, because, you know, Jocko is a manga, and this is a manga, technically, it makes sense for you to be, like, have, you know, to have read the Jocko manga. I do not give that same leeway to Super the anime, because it is the anime. Like, you know, you need to give an anime origin to Jocko. So, you know, so yeah, like, like, you know, Jocko being in this doesn't bother me because there's the Jocko manga and this is a manga and it's all the same format. So, you know, if you had read the Dragon Ball manga, then you go to the Jocko manga, then you go to the Dragon Ball Super manga, you know, it all links together. Uh, where with, um, where with, uh, Dragon Ball, um, with the uh, Dragon Ball Super, you know, this asshole just fucking shows up and you have no context for him and the fucking show doesn't try to explain him at all. All right, so, uh, yeah, that's my thoughts on the Dragon Ball Super manga as of right now. Like I said, I think it makes some improvements. I think it makes things worse in some ways. I think it makes some of the same mistakes that the anime still makes. Uh, And it it does some of the good things that the anime still does, like the Kaba fight. Uh, Overall, it's it's an all-right volume like it was entertaining to read i don't necessarily think it's good i don't regret reading it um much like the first volume though this is still in the territory of uh glorified uh art book yeah i don't really consider it a story it's like i said glorified art book toyotaro's fucking artwork still goddamn gorgeous and i will definitely be picking up the third volume just so i can look at more of that man's amazing fucking artwork so yeah until next time guys zeon out